The term Planet X was coined by the American astronomer Percival Lowell sometime between 1905 and 1908. It describes an unobserved planet that perturbs the orbit of a known planet. A perturbation is a deviation in a planet's orbit, and the Planet X we're searching for is Neptune's perturber, which, like Neptune, orbits our Sun. For this reason, Planet X is described in ancient wisdom texts and folklore from around the world as Marduk, Frightener, Destroyer, Herkobolus, Nibiru, and more. So is Planet X really nothing more than an internet hoax perpetrated by panic for profit fear mongers as debunkers claim? Or is there more to it than that? There is. And it begins in 18th century Europe. On March 13, 1781, William Herschel discovered Uranus, making it the first planet to be discovered with a telescope. Following his discovery, European astronomers turned their attention on Uranus and observed perturbations in its orbit. This discovery would eventually launch the search for Planet X. If one were to choose the father of Planet X research, it would have to be Alexis Bouvard, a French astronomer who observed the perturbations in the orbit of Uranus and attributed them to the existence of an unknown planet, the first Planet X. Unfortunately, Bouvard died before the coordinates for Neptune could be mathematically determined by French mathematician Urbain Le Verrier and British mathematician John Couch Adams using Bouvard's observations. Verrier gets the official credit because he relayed those coordinates to astronomer John Gall of the Berlin Observatory and five days later Neptune was observed by Gall on September 23, 1846. This made Neptune the first planet to be discovered by a mathematical prediction. So, Neptune was also the first Planet X to be discovered. But subsequent calculations based on the orbits of Uranus and Neptune indicated the presence of yet another Planet X well beyond the orbit of Neptune. And so the search resumed. Not in Europe, but in America. The Lowell Observatory was established in 1894 in Flagstaff, Arizona by Percival Lawrence Lowell, an independent businessman, mathematician, and astronomer. One reason Lowell founded the observatory was to study the planet Mars and its canals. The other was the search for other objects of interest in our solar system, most particularly Neptune's perturber, Planet X a fact that revisionist historians downplay or paint over. Yet it was Lowell's intention to find the mysterious Planet X that led to the discovery of Pluto. In 1929, 14 years after Lowell's death, a young astronomer by the name of Clyde W. Tombaugh was retained by the Lowell Observatory to carry on the search for Planet X. And on February 18, 1930, he discovered Pluto. At the time, astronomers believed he had found Planet X, Neptune's perturber. Consequently, the topic of Planet X languished for some time after Tombaugh's discovery. However, after the discovery of Pluto's moon Charon in 1978, it was determined that Pluto lacked the mass to be Neptune's perturber, as it is only about 60% the size of our own moon. So with that, the search for Planet X 
was once again afoot. It's also interesting to note that Pluto was later demoted to the status of a dwarf planet in 2006 by the International Astronomical Union. In 1950, Emmanuel Velikovsky published Worlds in Collision, and he was viciously attacked by mainstream science, even though he corresponded frequently with Albert Einstein. What generated this medieval response from modern science is that Velikovsky used ancient accounts to question the Darwinian notion of evolution with evidence of periodic cataclysms caused by large objects flying through the core of our solar system. Despite ruthless suppression, Velikovsky's work reawakened an open discussion of Planet X, and following that, a steady trickle of interest emerged, both in mainstream science and the media. On March 3, 1972, NASA launched the Pioneer 10 spacecraft to explore the outer planets. However, according to government whistleblowers, the real purpose was to find Planet X, or at least to help narrow down the search field. An interesting aspect of Pioneer 10 is that it also carried a small gold anodized aluminum plaque designed by astronomer Carl Sagan, should the spacecraft be found by extraterrestrials. At present, communication with the Pioneer 10 spacecraft is no longer possible. Following the launch of Pioneer 10, the topic of Planet X would have languished again had it not been for Zachariah Sitchin, the author of The Twelfth Planet, which was first published in 1976. According to his translations of ancient Sumerian texts, a race of beings living on a planet called Nibiru bioengineered early hominids on Earth to turn them into slaves for the purpose of mining gold. Called the Anunnaki, these beings lived on a planet the Sumerians called Nibiru, what we call Planet X today. And the Sumerian accounts tell us that it orbits our Sun every 3600 years and flies through the core of our system often causing great cataclysms on Earth. Sitchin's translations and theories are corroborated by an ancient wisdom text called the Colburn Bible. And according to Planet X historian Greg Jenner in his book, Planet X and the Colburn Bible Connection, previous flybys of this mysterious object caused the sinking of Atlantis, the Deluge, and the Ten Plagues of Exodus. Although Sitchin was continuously mocked and attacked by fundamentalists, our government took his work seriously and on January 25, 1983, NASA launched the Infrared Astronomical Satellite, IRAS. Its mission was to map the sky using infrared. According to NASA, IRAS was unable to complete its mission due to a failure in its supercooling system, and much of the data collected from the probe was classified and has never been disclosed. 